Hey guys, it's Aisha. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a book talk on Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. That's all I have to say for this book. End of video. I am completely kidding, but this book gave me a lot of emotions and I am here today to talk about the emotions this book gave me. So the first thing I want to talk about this book is the division between the reds and the silvers. The reds are the normal human beings. They don't have anything special about them. They have red blood and they just work for everything that they want. They, ha they live in poverty most of the time. And yeah, so they just work for the hierarchies. They just do everything that they need to to survive. The silvers on the other hand have silver blood and they have supernatural powers because of their silver blood. So they have the ability to manipulate things, to control things and everything. So yeah, and they mostly are part of the royalty families and just families that are in the high houses. So the next thing I want to talk about is Mare Barrow. And she is a 17 year old girl she is a red blood and she just she doesn't work at all she steals to make her money and to provide for her family her sister on the other hand works as a seamstress she is an ap apprentice for a seamstress and she works in the hall where the high houses are for the summer and the royalty family is for the summer so Mare is always living in her sister's shadow because she steals steals for a living while her sister actually works for a living and her family would much rather Mare be like her sister rather than her stealing to provide for her family. So Mare is almost 18 years old and she has a best friend that is almost 18 years old too. Her best friend's name is Keylorn and he is an apprentice for a fisherman but the one day her best friend's teacher person dies and so he doesn't he isn't an apprentice anymore and if you're not an apprentice to anyone then you are conscripted to the army so mare and keylorn are both going to be sent to the army once they turn 18 and mare is trying to come up with a way to get them out of the stilts out of the place that they live in and escape conscription because she does not want that life for herself and for her best friend. So one night she is walking around trying to come up with enough money to escape her and her best friend from conscription when she comes across a boy named Cal and he is dressed up in raggedy clothes. He is he is a red and he just he has enough money for her to steal from so she was trying to steal from him but she got caught and instead of him being all mad about it he actually gives her a coin and she starts talking to him and explaining how she doesn't want to go to conscription and she is trying to escape from conscription with her best friend and she tells him everything and then she just leaves and he was listening and giving her advice and he just leaves as well and then the next morning Mayor Mare and her family are awoken by the officers from the hall, the king's officers, and Mare thinks that she is being taken away or executed for her plan, master plan to leave, but in reality, it, she just got a job from the for, to work for the king at the palace as a servant. So I want to talk about how Mare came to be. She was working at the palace during the Queen's Trial, which is a competition to find out who will be be throttled to the king's son and also become the next queen later on down the road so while that was going on one of the girls that was competing for the queen's trial um actually made some of the booths that the families were looking were and watching from fall down and mare was there and so she fell down and there is the this electric thing around the arena to keep everyone all the family safe and everything but mayor fell right into it and instead of her dying from the electric electric covering she just felt all this power come into her and so the girl that was 
doing was competing for the Queen's Trio. She's a magnetron, which she can control metal and everything. So she was trying to throw these knives at Mare, and Mare put her hand up, and all of a sudden, all these sparks and lightning came out of her hand and threw the knives away and almost killed the girl that was competing for the Queen's Trio. So all of a sudden, everyone's just freaking out. Reds never have powers, and so everyone's just freaking out about it. And so the king and queen have to put a explanation towards what she is. So everyone's freaking out about this reds never have power and all of a sudden this red girl that's working as a servant has power and so everyone's just trying to figure out what's going on so the king and queen lock her up and then come up with the excuse and explanation towards what she is and so she said they come up with a complete lie for Mare and so Mare has to live in the castle now and the palace now and she just has to live a whole lie. She is also sent to be a princess later on married to the second son of the king. So Mare finds out that the guy that she met the other night, Cal, is actually the son of the king and the next king to be so that just really surprises her if you have not read this book yet i suggest you leave this video now so i want to talk about mare and cal's relationship real quick mare and cal have a lot of complications throughout the book and i just i root for mare and cal like mal mal is in my life i know there is a lot of complications and everything and mare seems to hate him at some points because of his views on the reds and the, the division between the reds and the silvers but you just have to you have to love them you have to because they're so i feel like they're so perfect together i swear and yeah so then there's maven and mare and maven and mare are the ones that are supposed to be getting married later down the line and i was rooting for them mainly towards the middle of the book because cal was being a little asshole but but Mare and Cal, Mare and Cal are forever, they're forever, and I don't care if they don't think of that at the end of the book or whatever, but they know they love each other. During all of this, during all of her problems and her living at the castle, there is a rebellious group of reds called the Scarlet Guard, and they are viewed as terrorists because they bomb places just to get Silver's attention, and they just want a revolution. So, Mayor... Mayor joins the group, and so does Maven, and Maven, and Mayor... <sighs> I just I can't that's when I just like figured out I love Maven and Mare but then like the twist at the end of the book so the Scarlet Guard is a rebellious group trying to gain equality between the Reds and the Silvers and no other kingdom is like that so Cal since he is a king to be he doesn't feel like it is really necessary to change the division between the Reds and the Silvers because it will cause a lot of problems between all the kingdoms and he feels like if one kingdom changes then all the other kingdoms will attack so yeah and maven doesn't really feel that way maven feels like there should be equality between the reds and the silvers and he really roots to have a change and he but since he isn't going to be king he can't really do anything about it so the only thing that he really can think of is that he joins the scarlet guard and join the rebellion so the twist in the book is really 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 good i really i don't feel like there's any better way to end this book and twist this book so the twist in the book is that queen alara maven's mother and the queen to the king king tiberius um cal and maven's father um the twist in the book is that queen alara didn't really love king tiberius and he, she killed him and joined up with maven so Maven wasn't really part of the Scarlet Guard. He didn't really care for anything that happened between the Reds and the Silvers. He just was faking the whole thing. The King was supposed to kill Mayor and Maven because of treason, because they 
found out that they joined the Scarlet Guard, and that is a rebellious group also known as terrorists, and so they were supposed to be executed before it, but Queen Alara, she loves her son dearly, so she decided to kill the king because she never actually really loved him, and she decided to kill the king, but Queen Alara, she can control people, she can get in their minds and control them like a puppet, so instead of her killing the king himself, herself, she controlled Cal's mind to kill the, the king, his father, himself, so yeah, everything just really, 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 oh my god, this book, this book is really, really good. So since May, since Cal is said to be killing uh, the killer of the king, him and Mare are both supposed to be executed and, um, but instead of being executed like normal, they are put to fight five people with powers. Cal has his powers, but Mare doesn't because Mare is just said to be a red girl again, even though she still has her powers, but someone took them away from her. So in the arena, in the arena, in the arena, Cal and Mare are supposed to fight um, Cal's soon to be, but not really anymore, wife, his ex soon to be wife I guess and her brother and then a person that can control water a strong arm and a person that can turn invisible and everything so since Mare doesn't have her power she j is just running around running around running around just trying to get away from everyone who is trying to kill her and Cal is trying to fight off his ex future wife and her brother by himself and he seems to be having some trouble because his powers aren't as strong because Maven is now trying to take them away from him and everything and so yeah so the one guy that is took Mare's power away he's just standing at one of the gates and this strong arm is trying to throw this like really sharp pipe at Mare to kill her but but Mare stronger than that. She runs away. She is corners herself on accident and then she is at the gate where the man with all her powers is and he is trying to mock her. He is trying to get inside her head and mess with her and then she is since she is cornered she's she really she really is smart. Every, everyone thinks she is not making the smart choices she can't really run away anymore so the strong arm takes his aim he throws the pipe and then she ducks and it kills the guy that takes all her powers so now that he's dead she has all her powers back so now she's gaining control and everything and everyone in the arena is freaking 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 out about it because she's a red girl and they know she's a red girl because she's bleeding dripping red blood all over the place because she's all cut up and everything because she's fighting and and everyone sees her having her powers and everyone's freaking out. The TV screens that had the cameras on her shut off. Everyone's supposed to leave the arena because they know now her, know her powers and everything. Now that she has her powers, everyone's trying to run away from her. Except some people are still trying to kill her and everything. And then, yeah. And the ending. The ending. Okay, so... So eventually the Scarlet Guard comes and saves them from the tunnels and everything and I just, I, I am so happy, I am so happy about that. They escaped and the Scarlet Guard and Farley's still alive. Farley is the leader of the Scarlet Guard and Keylorn is a part of the Scarlet Guard as well and they're alive, they're alive and then um, once, once Mare became a part of the palace and everything, she told the king that as long as she keeps her secret safe to get her three brothers out of the army and everything and to not conscript her best friend Keylorn and then her sister Jisa. So yeah, so everyone and then her family's all safe. They have money now and everything, but 
once she got once she went to visit her family she figured out that her brother her favorite brother shade is dead because he tried to desert the army and everything so now he's dead but at the end once he's on the bus and everything she figured during the book she figured out that he used to be a part of the scarlet guard and that he used to be like her with powers and everything and that's why they killed him but but at the end of the book when the scarlet guard came to save them she figures out that her brother is alive shade is alive and that he has the power of teleportation and that no one could kill him because he moved too fast no one could get to him fast enough because he can teleport so the ending of the book the epilogue killed me i absolutely 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 adored this book and i really really recommend everyone everyone to read this book this is obviously one of my top favorite books and i really really enjoyed it all right guys so that is the end of my video i really hope you guys enjoyed please a leave a like and subscribe and let me know down below any feelings that you have towards the red queen by victoria Aveyard. i hope to see you soon on any of my other videos thank you for watching bye